In the early to mid-90s, Bosnia was not the place to be. War ravaged the country with mass murder and widespread destruction, which is still visible today. The effects of war leaves behind scars and is forever a dark memory for many people. But 20 years later, Bosnia is a peaceful nation with an incredible landscape, beautiful landmarks, diverse culture, the best chevapi, and best of all, the kindest people I've ever met awesome who welcome people, you with man. open arms. Awesome people right here. <laughs> this is an incredible country I've had the privilege of traveling to. I found myself a ride to Mostar. See you soon, Bosnia. And I hope I can share with you reasons why you should come too. I start my journey here in Medjugorje, a very religious town where six children claim to have seen the Virgin Mary. In the Catholic world, this place is kind of a big deal. I've got some time here in Bosnia to spend. It's going to be an amazing time. Let's do it. Get to drink. <sighs> Above Blagaj is a fortress of the same name. To know that this once served a purpose. Although in plain sight from below, it fell off the beaten path from above with no tourists, sitting on history and enjoying an incredible view. Mostar is known for its world-famous bridge, Stari Most, a 16th century Ottoman bridge that connects the two parts of town, split by the Neretva River. The original bridge was destroyed during wartime in 1993. But fortunately, rebuilt and replicated like its original form in the early 2000s, bringing people from all over the world to take in its beauty. It's like bringing me back to Istanbul. A lot of terrible things that happened during the Yugoslav Wars. Yugoslavia fell apart. All the republics became their own countries. What happened here in Bosnia was the worst. When you walk around Mostar, you can see some of the destruction. You can see bullet holes riddled through buildings. Some buildings completely destroyed in the dilapidated state. Bosnia is a beautiful country and I'm here to see some of the beauty but I'm also here to understand in person some of the things that happen. Well this is interesting. This is a cemetery dedicated to those who fought during World War II in Yugoslavia. It actually looks more like a monument than anything. I would presume this place was damage during the war and has been left for vandalism and abandonment. It's a shame to see places like this fall into abandonment and into ruin, but in this case, at least I have a nice view of Mostar. I've been having chivapi basically all along the coastline of Croatia and many people told me that the best chivapi is here in Bosnia. So let's give it a try. Let's hit the road. Heading north takes you on a gorgeous scenic route driving along the Nenetva River in the middle of the mountains. This place is taking my breath away, man. These mountains are incredible. Wow. I'm here in uh, the small town of Jablanica, Bosnia, in the middle of the mountains because I stumbled upon a picture of a destroyed bridge it commemorates the partisans and Tito, who eventually became the leader of Yugoslavia for many years, 
destroyed this bridge because they were under attack from both sides of the mountains. The Germans on one side, the Croats, and the Italians on the other. We basically continue to save more lives and uh, prevent further attacks. Aside from the history, it's extremely beautiful here. It's like a, almost feels like a hidden treasure. I'm glad to be here. Trying some delicious burek with chicken. It's very good. Say what's up? What's up? Represent Bosnia. <laughs> yeah. Awesome He's people. good man. Awesome people right here. <laughs> a couple years ago, I was just browsing through Bosnia and I stumbled upon this lake and I was like, you oh, know, maybe I should stay here. I looked at Airbnbs and I was like, you know, I'll save it just in case I decide to come. I absolutely love this place. I paid $43 for a one night stay. It's a little more than what I think I'd pay for a, a stay anywhere in Bosnia. I think there's enough beds for me. One bed, a little sofa bed, small kitchen, even more beds. This is sweet, man. I love Airbnb. I've never been rowing before. But this is a first for everything. anybody traveling to Bosnia, consider this place. Guarantee you it's worth it. It's zero tourism, all locals. It's my kind of town. Fortunately for me, to add on to that, I found myself a couch surfer. Welcome! Special drink? Special. From a uh, Sambucus flower? Homemade. Homemade, Homemade yeah. Homemade domestic? Domaci. Domaci. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good, man. Mix it with this sugar, honey, and a lemon. Uh, some liquid, uh, I keep drinking, I can't stop. <laughs> yeah. Hitchhiking has been incredible in Bosnia. Waiting no longer than a minute and meeting incredibly kind people. On this ride, my driver went out of his way to bring me to my final city. The country's capital city has surely seen some rough times during the Bosnian War. With many people afraid to roam the streets, avoiding sniper fire to mortar shelling. This place right here is the Markale Market. Two times during the Bosnian War, the Bosnian Serbs sent mortar shells right into this market killed tons of people, injured many. It was the second event that triggered the NATO bombing campaign. It's one of many terrible incidents that happened in Bosnia that is still felt by the people today. In some places, you can feel the energy. This place is powerful. I can't believe it. I didn't know exactly where the cemetery was, but I just walked into it. And you can truly feel what happened here. But since the war, Sarajevo has rebuilt and has become a beautiful modern metropolis with much to do for locals and tourists alike. It's a moving city with streetcars. Where I sit is the location of the assassination of Archduke of Austria, Franz Ferdinand. And it was one huge event that triggered World War I. From then on, the world changed. Many cafes. That's good. A beautiful city center. 
with an Orthodox and Catholic church and mosques within a few blocks from each other. Many overlooks around in the city. And high mountains for the ultimate view. Some of you might remember the 1984 Olympics here in the former Yugoslavia, right here in Sarajevo. I'm at the now abandoned bobsleigh tracks used that year. Bosnia is incredible. I fell absolutely in love with this country in just the week that I've been here. I think my favorite part about this country is the people. The people are probably the most friendly people I've ever met. Anywhere from couch surfing to bakeries to restaurants to people I meet in the street. You know, simple smile, they would smile back. The, the language barrier may be an issue, but that that's never a problem. This is the first country where I've literally hitchhiked everywhere. And I've had so much confidence in doing so since I started hitchhiking not so long ago. Every car I've been in, some of them speaking really good English, some of them no English, but everybody's been incredible. Despite the, the dark past, the, the terrible things that's happened in this country, these people are strong, man. This country knows how to stay strong. The people know how to stay strong. This right here is the Goat's Bridge. Back there in the Ottoman times, it is said to have linked Sarajevo to Istanbul. There's so many beautiful icons of this country that have been destroyed and yet they rebuild and it's just as beautiful as it was originally. And the spirit of the Bosnian people is incredible. Right now I'm waiting for my blah blah car. It just so happens to come from uh, Slavonia, the north part of Croatia, through Bosnia and down to Dubrovnik to enjoy Croatia for the final time, the third and final time. To anyone that comes to Eastern Europe, put Bosnia on your list. Cheers to this beautiful country and its amazing people. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and join me on this life-changing voyage across the Balkans.